Welcome back to day eight of my 31 days of Halloween theme drawing tutorials. Every single day in October, a new video with a new tutorial. Today's video, I'm gonna show you how you can draw this cartoon spooky ghoul from start to finish, all in real time, no time lapse. So if you wanna draw with me, keep watching. All right guys, so let's go ahead and get started and draw the spooky cartoon ghoul. So to begin with, I'm using a 4,000 by 4,300 DPI canvas. And for my brush, I'm gonna start out using my HB pencil that's part of my new pencil set. And for my color palette, just like the rest of the series, I've got the color palette already made up. So you can download this for free off my website. I'll link it in the description below. If you just go to bjdell.com under the YouTube reference link section, you can download this as a JPEG. It saves to your camera roll. Then you go up to the wrench icon and go to insert a photo add it in to procreate it's going to bring it up as a separate layer and then you can just long press each of the boxes to bring up that color as we go through today's tutorial so let's get started i'm just going to use black to start my sketch like i said i'm using that hb here and for this ghoul i think i kind of want him to have almost like a hunchback look to him just a really zany cartoon look so i'm going to start out just doing kind of like a big oval here that's going to be his body and then his head's going to kind of come out of that so let's go ahead and let's put his head about right here and then we'll make this kind of long so he's got this really crazy thick body but this really kind of long drawn out gaunt shaped head i think that looks pretty funny and then we'll bring this back and around i think i want him to kind of have almost like a kind of like a robe type thing here coming down and kind of narrowing off at the bottom and then we can have the robe kind of have the tails coming off here in the back so it's almost like a character on its own just the way that these things fold and fall across i love doing this i've done this before too in my uh grim reaper one if you guys watch that's so a older let's draw video on my channel but I think these are fun to do like this, and you can just do some crazy kind of shapes coming around. Like I said, it almost becomes kind of a character on its own, so I think that looks good there. Let's go ahead, and for his back arm here, we'll just have it kind of coming out from the center here. And then I think for the hand on this one, I want it just kind of barely visible, just the kind of the fingertips peeking through here at the bottom. I think that's kind of funny. So we'll just draw those like that. And then for this one, we'll kind of have it coming down from behind the head here, just kind of the sleeve. And then have the arm coming down with the hand here. And then to kind of add some humor to this, of course, a ghoul you expect to be pretty bad and kind of creepy, but let's add to the humor here and let's make him holding a balloon. I think that would be great. So let's draw just a circle up here, oval, and have this balloon coming down. I'm gonna kind of twist this and zoom into the hand here. We'll kind of start breaking up this hand, getting the fingers in here. We'll have that string coming down into that hand there. And maybe draw kind of like a skull here on the balloon. So it's kind of cute but creepy at the same time. I think that looks kind of funny there. Now let's get the face worked in. So starting out here, it's kind of got that three quarters perspective. So let's go ahead and get the eyes in here first. I'm gonna do just a really big eye here, kind of a smaller eye here. Get the pupils in there. Kind of make these set in a little bit here. Bring the brow around up into the forehead, and then bringing the forehead back and down and around. Draw the ear in there. Maybe kind of have 
this coming down a little bit further into the chin here. Let's give him a big overbite here at the bottom. And then for the nose, I think I want to have just kind of like a it's like a zombie or skeleton nose there. And then we can kind of draw some teeth around here too to kind of show that overbite. I think that looks pretty good. So you can see, like I've talked about before, my sketches super loose. I don't really use them as a tracing method on inking. They're just more kind of showing you where things should go. Generally, uh, it's not going to be something that we go in and trace 100%. So that's why I keep them really loose. I like that loose organic feel to them. So let's start to ink this guy. So to do that, we're going to go back up to our layers here. And we're going to go ahead and hit a new layer by hitting that plus. And then we're going to drop the opacity of our sketch layer. So if I go to my sketch layer, hit that N, we're going to slide this down so we can barely see that. And that's going to be our sketch layer now, just with a lower opacity. This layer two is going to be our inking layer. So I'm going to go up to my brushes now. I'm going to switch over to my cartooning set and I'm going to switch back and forth between my standard anchor and my standard anchor streamline for this. And let's see, before we even start to do any inking, I usually like to decide where the light source is coming from. I've talked before about line weights and deciding where your light source comes from to begin with really helps you decide your line weights. Anything closer to the light source is going to have a thinner light and weight. Anything further away is going to have a thicker line weight. And it really starts to do the heavy lifting of showing the viewer where the shadows are, where the highlights are before you even add them in. So let's go ahead and have the light source come in from this direction here. And so that means anything on this right hand side then is going to have a little bit lighter line weight. Everything here towards the left is going to have a little bit darker of a line weight. So I think I'm going to start up here on these creases and these are going to be fairly light as far as line weights go. So we'll get those in there. And then as this comes back around, it's going to be lighter here and heavier towards the back. So on a large section like this, this is one I usually like to use my streamline kind of helps if you're doing a super long line. If you've got jitters to your stroke, it really smooths those out. So let's go ahead and do that. You're going to see I'm pressing not as hard here and then pressing harder here towards the back. So it gives me that thicker line weight towards the back. I think I'm going to make this just a tad bit bigger. Try it one more time. There we go. So it's got that thicker line weight there in the back. I think that looks good. So now we can kind of zoom in here and start to get these in here as well. Once again, I'm just kind of tapering off my stroke at the end here. That's one thing that these cartooning brushes are really good for. They give you a fantastic taper on the ends. You just really have to practice with them though to get the feel of when you should let up pressure off of the Apple Pencil to be able to achieve the same tapers that I'm getting here. Same thing with line weights too. It's really just a learning process and you wanna keep practicing at it to get better line weights and better tapers. So bring this up and around. Just adding in some extra folds here as we go. I want to do that one over again, a little bit closer to my original one. And like I said, you can see these sketch lines are really just kind of suggestions where everything goes. I'm not using them 100% exactly like they are there. Just using the suggestion of where everything should be. All right, so there's that. Let's go ahead and kind of bring down the body here. Let's get the arm here next. Once again, it's going to be a thicker line back here and lighter towards the front. Kind of like the armpit crease here. Get these fingers in here. And 
and the thumb. So there's that. Next up, let's go ahead and start working on the face here. So I'm gonna have a little bit heavier of a line here coming down and around. And if you don't like a taper, you can always switch to your eraser and kind of make that a little bit sharper too. Slip around and get these teeth in here. I'm going to go kind of heavier towards the back, lighter towards the front. Redo that one real quick. There we go. We'll start here on the eye. I'm going to bring this down and around so it's kind of like a bag underneath his eye pulling around there I think that looks pretty cool like that we'll get the eye in here in a second there we go let's go ahead and do this one next same thing here I'm going to bring a line up and around kind of for that bag there down here at the bottom. Bring in an eyebrow here at the top and maybe one over here as well. And then we'll build up this brow across here. Want that a little bit thinner though since it's towards the front here where that light source is coming in. There's that. Let's go ahead and draw our ear in here. And bringing the head around. There we go. Let's get the uh, pupils in here. And going back up to my eraser just to add that shine in here. And back to my brush. And get these nostrils in here. There's that, and then finally the arm over here, the hand, and the balloon. So zooming in just a little bit so you guys can see it better. want this to be kind of light there towards the top, because that's going to be where the light source is. A little bit lighter than that. There we go. Do the arm here, I'll flip this around. And then you can see here with the index finger, I usually have this one overlap. So as it comes down and around, it comes back up. That'll be the only one that overlaps there. And then these will just be the basic oval shapes here. A little over the edge there. So there's the hand holding the balloon string. So we'll get that in next. out there let's get the balloon now so kind of heavier there towards the back lighter towards the front this is a little bit more forgiving because of course we've got the part where the balloon kind of ties in together so we can do some erasing there we'll kind of put some creases here where it's tied string around there looks good let's go ahead and get this skull in here one eye and the other eye fill these in Do some extra lines here around the top. I'm going to switch back to my standard anchor now. I 
don't even think I'm going to give them a nose or anything. Just leave it like that. So there we go. That's going to be our basic inking. So we're done there. Let's go ahead and turn off our sketch layer and see what we're left with. So those are our inks. I think I'm going to thicken up this one just a tad bit here at the bottom. Kind of trails off a little bit too thin there. Bring up an extra line there. All right. So now we're going to go ahead and add in colors. So to do this, we're going to go up to our layers. We're going to go ahead and make a new layer. And then we're going to drag and drop this one underneath our lines layer. Now we need to go back up to our lines layer and we're going to select this one and we're going to set this one as reference. So this is going to allow us to drag and drop all of our different colors down here onto layer three without messing at all with our lines layer. So we can start doing that now. Let's go back up to our colors and I'm going to select Let's see, let's go with the second color over, this gray color. That's gonna be basically the head, it's gonna be the hand and the fingers. So we can drag these in. Got a little dot there I'm gonna get rid of later. Pull this around to all of our different colors. And then dark gray is going to be the robe. So really easy there, just two drops and we're done. I do need to get the insides of the nostrils though. So going back to that gray, I just long pressed on that gray to select it. We can just fill these in. Going back up to our colors. Let's go ahead and turn off the background. So now we can see the white is gone since our background is white. We can tell, okay, we need to add in the colors for the eyes. So going to the white then, we're just gonna go ahead and drag and drop the white here. Then of course, get inside there for those highlights on the pupils. And then for the teeth, going back up to our colors, we're gonna select this yellow for the teeth here. Throw those in there. Zoom in a little bit so we don't hit the lines. Well, there's that. And then finally the balloon. So let's turn back on our background color now. So we can see everything again. And going back up here, I'm going to go to the red. Throw that in here. And then also we need the white. So I'm just long pressing there and dragging and dropping the white for the skull. So there we go. Our color flats are done. Now we can start doing shadows and highlights, which we've already decided where the light source is coming in from. So that makes it a little bit easier. So to do this, let's go up and go to our layers. Let's make a new layer. And then we're going to select this one and we're going to set this one to clipping mask. So this is going to allow us to color in on this layer and it's only going to apply it to anything on layer three. So we can't go outside of the lines. It makes it super quick, super easy. And let's start with the actual robe first. So to do this, I'm going to go to the black here and I'm going to start to just going back to my standard anchor, not the streamline one. I'm going to just start pulling in a pretty big shape here for my shadows. I like to get a pretty big area done. And then once it's done, I can go ahead and drop the opacity of this and see what it's going to look like. So now we can drag and drop over the black. But first, we need to go back to our layers and we need to turn off reference on layer two. Otherwise, it's going to fill in everything. So now that that's turned off, going back to layer four, dragging and dropping this in, you can see it fills in a pretty good chunk. So we can go up now to our layers with this layer selected in blue. Just hit that N. We're going to drag the opacity here to the left. And I've got that set at about 21 looks pretty good so that's going to be our shadow color so now we can start kind of filling this in a little bit more so i'm going to go really heavy here in the back so once again the light source is coming in from this direction kind of pull this around as well
around the ear, and around the cheek and the chin. This back down. I'm going to cut it off about right there. Get around the fingers here. All right, I think everything's connected if we drag and drop. Yep, looks good. So we've got a pretty heavy shadow here. I don't want everything totally shadowed like this though. I've talked about it before. You really kind of need a break in colors so the viewer can see, okay, there are shadows there when everything like on this side is super, super heavy on shadows like there. It's really hard to tell that. So to fix this, we're just gonna go in with our eraser and just kind of erase some areas of that shadow so we've got that regular base color underneath showing through so this really kind of helps to break it up shows that yes there is a shadow there and you can do kind of some funky lines too if you want to you know do stuff like this totally up to you how you want to go about it you can even pull some like that around the top too I'm going to go to my standard anchor to do that, though, so I've got a little bit more organic lines there. Stuff like that. Kind of breaks it up a little bit. You can do the same thing here, kind of towards the front of these. Pull some of those shadows off. And you'll see, with doing this, I'm basically following the lines that I've already done with my outline. So those kind of help me decide where everything's going. And then here we can kind of maybe pull up some streaks here. Like that. Pulling some extra lines like that around there, maybe around the front. Just so you can see, yep, there's different colors there. And maybe some here around the back too. I'm also going to hit underneath the fingers or underneath the sleeve on the fingers i guess so we got the shadow of that coming down there all right so that looks good we can go ahead and bring in some more shadows down here where those creases come in like so and I think that looks good. So that's pretty much the shadows for the robe. Let's go ahead and add one more back in here just a little bit. And then let's go ahead and start to do the shadows on the face now. So for this, we're going to go back up to our color palette and we're going to go to this darker color, the second line there to the left. And this is going to be the shadows for our face. I think with these, sometimes if you switch to a different color, you might have to make a new layer because the opacity that you selected for that first shadow color might not match up with the second shadow color. I think this one actually looks pretty good though, so we're not gonna have to do that. I'm gonna keep these all on the same layer. I think these look pretty good set at that same percentage. But yeah, sometimes that might be something that you have to do, make two different shadow layers or three different shadow layers, really depending on how many different colors of shadows you're using, just because they're not gonna look the same at the same opacity. These get some underneath the eyes, get some inside the ear here, maybe down and around this backside. Here. Kind of outside there a little bit. Oops. Got to switch back to black now to do that. That's another benefit of doing a uh, different layer for the different highlights and or different shadow colors there. Because you see when I erase this one, it erased my original black shadow too. So that's one of the benefits of doing that as well is being able to erase if you go over the edge. That's also why we'll do a separate layer for the highlights so that we don't have to worry about that same problem with the highlights. So there's that. Maybe a shadow here along the back of the head. 
coming up and around. Like I said, with this, just kind of following that same curve of the outline, just to make sure that that comes in right. I think actually I'm gonna connect this all the way around to this eye here. And to do this, we're gonna to have to change this up. I know I just did that ear there, but that's not gonna work with the same color around here. I'm just gonna kind of build up this shadow a little bit more. it in here to this tooth as well. All right, so now we need to get that ear. So I'm going to switch back to black now, and we can just get that shaded in with black there. So it looks a little bit more inset. So let me switch back to that darker here, and go ahead and add the shadows in here. around the fingers. That looks good. I'm not sure what this is gonna look like on the teeth. Check that out, and then I'm gonna check the black out and see which one looks better on the teeth. Yeah, I think the black's gonna look better on the teeth, so we'll add some shadows there along the back. And then switching back to our green, we'll add some drop shadows on those too. All right, so that looks good. And then let's give some shadows to the eyes. And with these, let's go ahead and go black for this. And then once again, we're just kind of following along with that curve of the eye. Kind of taper there and back up. I'm going to switch this over to my streamline again so I get a little bit more control as I come around. All right, there we go. I think those look pretty good. Pull them back out to see what we're left with. Yeah, I think that looks good. So let's go ahead. I just noticed too, bringing those shadows down on the hands like I did, really need to do those with that green color. So I'm going to go back and hit those again, just because I want everything to kind of stay using the same color palette. So there we go. Quick fix. All right. So next up, let's go ahead and add some highlights to this guy. So to do that, once again, we're going to make a new layer. So we're going to hit the plus button here. And we're going to set this one to Clipping Mask as well. And we're going to select that bright green color here. And once again, light source coming in this way. So we're just going to bring this around the front where that light source is coming in. Right there. Bring in some around the front of the eyes here. So those have a nice little shine to them as well. That looks pretty cool. You can bring it down along the front of this sleeve. Around the fingers. Doing a little extra one there for that shine, and maybe one there. Do around the front of the teeth as well. around the front of the lip here. Down the front of the mouth there. And that little bag there under his eye. You can maybe go ahead and do kind of like a oval one up here too for that extra shine on the forehead. That looks good. Bring one around the front of this. And then we're going to do the same thing around the robe. Once again, just kind of following the direction that these lines take. 
And then down the front of the sleeve as well. Maybe a little bit there on the bottom towards the front. Then go back in and erase where we overlapped. So there's that. Let's go ahead and get the top here of the row as it comes down and around. that maybe one more kind of circle one in here as well and then finally we need to get the balloon too so we'll bring that around the edge here back up the creases here another one there and maybe a little shine here and maybe a big Shine right up here. Pull that back and see. All right. There we go. I think that looks really good. So there's our base design with our character, our color flats, our highlights, and our shadows. So now let's go ahead and add a background to this guy. So to do this, going up to our layers, we're gonna go down to our very bottom layer, layer one, which was our sketch layer that's turned off now, and we're gonna make a new layer. Then going back up to our color palette, we're gonna select that, and we're gonna to go to this gray here at the very bottom. And then making sure I'm on standard ink or streamline, I'm just gonna draw kind of like a crazy, it's like rectangle shape here. This is gonna be our background. And I wanna make this kind of look like bricks. So to do that, I'm gonna switch back to my eraser. And then I'm just gonna pull lines across here. And these are gonna be our bricks going behind. So it's almost like he's standing in front of a wall. Now, of course, the way bricks work, you've got the horizontal lines and then you also have the vertical lines. So we're gonna bring those up. And then the way, of course, bricks work then, the second row in between the two lines is where the next line comes. So that's where the in-between lines are going to be. Same thing here. So this would be here. This one, we're going to have a line here. This one's going to be here. Unless you might have to zoom in to make sure that you don't get too far up into your next row there. One's going to come there. One there. 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 Have one kind of here. And there's our brick wall behind him. Let's make that pop a little bit more and add some cool features to that. So to do that, we're still on layer six. We're gonna add a new layer. We're gonna select this one and set it to clipping mask. And then going back up to my brushes, I'm gonna to go to my texture pack here and I'm gonna to go to specs. I'm gonna to switch to black. And I'm gonna have this set really high here. I'm just gonna lightly pull in here on this backside. That's where our shadow is. I'm gonna to start to build up that and you'll see the specs coming in. Then I'm gonna switch back to that highlight color and then hit the front of these bricks here. It's real light. It's gonna kind of fade from that one to the next. So there you go. You can see pretty limited color palette here. It's almost a black and white design just with different shades of gray here. So almost a grayscale design. So we can go ahead and sign it now because we are done. So I'm gonna to switch to my black. I'm gonna make a new layer for my signature and switch back to my standard anchor and sign this guy down here at the bottom. And there we go. Pretty spooky cartoon ghoul for the newest day of my 
31 days of Halloween themed drawing tutorials, day eight. So hopefully you guys join me for the rest of these. Like I said, a new Halloween themed tutorial every single day for the entire month of October. If you guys do take part in these, definitely want to see what you guys can do and what you made. So if you post them online on social media, Instagram or Twitter, tag me at BJ Dell. Definitely interested in seeing you guys put these to use. If you like today's video too, make sure you give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and hit that bell for notifications so you can get alerted when I post the new videos. Or also, if you don't want to post them on social media as far as Instagram or Twitter, I do have a Facebook group called Keep Creating, a group for artists by artists. I'll link that in the description below. You can hop on over there and post the designs in the group as well. Ton of people already doing it, and I love seeing them all. As for me, I can be found online, bjdell.com. And that's it. Hopefully, I will see you guys back here tomorrow for another Halloween-themed drawing tutorial. So until next time, keep creating. Thank you.